So, many people have seen the Convex Earth documentary. <laughs> this was great. I'm sorry, but this was great. It was an hour and a half long claim of experimentation, which every bit of the experiments was claiming that they were searching for a flat Earth, even though it has nothing to do with a convex Earth. But I'm about to trim that hour and a half down to 12 minutes. Now, I only concern myself with the seven experiments that they did. All of the stuff beyond the one hour mark were conclusions drawn resulting from the test results that they were claiming. First, I'd like to acknowledge something. All over this video, they were talking about using GPS. Using high precision GPS. High precision GPS measurement. This is a GPS, the level GPS, the geodetic GPS. We have two devices with a high precision GPS. And GPS has to do with satellites. So there's one claim gone. <laughs> Not to mention there is no Strait of Gibraltar near France. And Lake Titicaca is about three kilometers above sea level, which changes all kinds of dimensions anyway. But let's get on to the seven experiments. Of these seven experiments, one was a wrong conclusion, three were completely worthless, two of them were flat out lies, and one of them didn't show any results. Ready? All right, let's do this. Number one was the boats over the horizon. Now, of course, this conclusion was wrong. First, they tried to say that telescopes bring things back into view, which, was, which were otherwise gone. And we all know that has to do with angular size. It has nothing to do with telescopes being some kind of magical thing that brings things back into view. It just concentrates on a smaller field of view. Anyway, they filmed the ship going over a horizon. And even though they discussed Fata Morgana, funny, I didn't see anybody in the comments actually disputing the use of the word Fata Morgana, which basically is a general term for a mirage, the telescope did not bring the ship back into view. All it did was decrease the field of view and magnify it. That's normal. That's what telescopes do. But the proportionate sizes of the ship, even the portions overlaid with the mirage, does not cover the entire vertical height of the ship, and a portion of the ship remains below the horizon as it gets further away regardless of where you think the horizon is. Fair enough? Okay. Moving on to the next one, the telescope experiment. Looking across Lake Titicaca, they could see something on the other side, which was stated to be 110 kilometers away. Now, of course, they didn't say what they were looking at, where they were at, which direction they were looking, and all this, but what is so amazing about being able to see something 110 kilometers away? That's nothing new, and that's not even the world record. Now, if they would have been able to film from one side of the lake to the other, maybe the shoreline of whatever it was they were looking at, that would be something to discuss. But they didn't. This was all they showed. The radio waves experiment. This one was a flat-out lie. They stated that they were one meter above the water with their antennas over a, what was the distance? The antennas were positioned at one meter from the water level at a distance of 14 kilometers. Which should have produced 3.84 meters of obstruction. Now let's not forget one thing. Radio waves are just like light waves. They're just longer. They are affected by refraction and reflection just the same as light is. So while this experiment shouldn't have been anything spectacular, we have connected. Got it. We're with connection here. It's responding. The machine is responding. Returning. I'm having connection to your computer there. Let's take a look at their results as they showed them. Because remember, this is supposed to be a line of sight radio shot, one meter above the water. At what distance again? The antennas were positioned at one meter from the water level at a distance of 14 kilometers. So, let's look at the screen that tells them that they were successful with this, one more time the distance? At a distance of 14 kilometers. When radios talk to each other, they send what's called an acknowledgement packet. It's just a little bundle of data that's shot off to the end and it returns. And they can get a distance from this. And let's look at what those results were. On the screen, you can see here a whole bunch of data which to a network guy like me is pure porn. The distance stated by the screen and the equipment does not say 14 kilometer shot. It says 1.4 kilometers or 0 0.8 miles. Even then the signal quality was only at about 20%. So at a distance of 
1.4 kilometers, getting this crappy of a signal, it wouldn't have made the 14 kilometers shot even unobstructed. This test was a flat out lie, as outed by the data screen. Now, they did a couple of laser tests in here. This was supposed to be a shot of a laser across a portion of Lake Titicaca. Again, let's not forget how high Titicaca is, so it will not have the exact same obstruction as something that was at sea level. But these are the results that were shown. Let me just play these unedited for you. It is hitting the hill on the hill. Look over there. It is hitting a tree above us here. Look at this. Look at theirs. Are you pointing yours too? We're seeing. We see yours. It's just too high. It's very high. Look there. You saw, you saw. In this direction. It made it. There, it appeared again. Go. There, it made it again. That's it. Stop there. More to the left. Stop, stop there. Stop. Through light here. It is illuminating here. It is moving there too. Here it is illuminating everything. We have already done the first tests, and the laser of team number one has already appeared here in the treetops that are on our side. And you tell me, if I were to say that this was proof, that these were my results of proof of the globe, if you would accept them. These are their results as published by them. So not only did they not show this cool laser bundle that they showed, which was nothing more than a handful of laser pointers organized around in a circle, they also didn't show any landmarks, any azimuths, elevations, anything. So you are just supposed to accept on faith that these results are anything. So... The building's claim. This one was outstandingly funny. And they, they did this claim actually twice in this, and we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Using GPS devices, their entire experiment was to see if they took a GPS reading at the bottom of a building, and then at a top of a building, and then do the same thing at another building, what was it, 3,050 kilometers away, take a GPS reading from the bottom, and also from the top of the building, that this was supposed to prove leaning of the buildings away from each other due to the curvature of the earth. Now I'm going to say that this test was completely and totally worthless. GPS gives you a longitude and latitude position on the surface of the earth. And while it will tell you your elevation, if you are going directly up vertically on flat or globe earth, that coordinate reading will not change other than your altitude. So if you were standing on top of a building or at the bottom of a building, it would still say the same reading. There would not be a disparity on flat earth or globe earth. Then they went on to test the curvature of water over the dam reservoir. So this was the same experiment again in a new dam location. And what was the new dam result supposed to be? Here, let me show you. This is Miami Beach at zero meters above sea level. This is Rio de Janeiro, zero meters above sea level. This is Melbourne, Australia, zero meters above sea level. This is the UK, zero meters above sea level. Are you starting to get the picture here? So doing a dam experiment to say that dam water is level is pretty silly. In fact, if you walked all the way around the dam lake, you would notice that the dam water is the same elevation above sea level. But then we come to the dam laser experiment. This one here was also another lie. With the team still in place, a beam of light was lit that should be visible at 18 kilometers on the side where the team of surveyors was. Do you see? Yes. Down. Can you see? Yes. Down. Can you see? Can you see? Yes. I am at water level. At water level. So okay. I will write down and you read the angles and the coordinates. The dam footage, looking across the dam lake, was supposedly from 18 kilometers away. 
where the dam surveyor said that he could see the white flashlight. Then the dam target guy pointed his laser from his hand at the dam surveyor. Here, let me show you something. And I want you to pay attention to something real quick here. This is what a laser looks like shown at a target from the target side over a distance. I'm not saying that this right here is any particular distance, but nevertheless, it's over a distance. Even flat earthers who have done this kind of test before, like Jaronism and Globusters, can attest to the fact that this twinkling takes place. Notice the shake and the twinkle and all that. These are typical characteristics of seeing a laser being pointed at you across a distance. And yet, during the experiment, a laser was added without warning the topographers. Do you see any other light? I see it. I did see it. I saw a laser now. He did see. He saw the laser. It die off. Lower the laser. All right. Wait a minute, Wilson. Now I saw the laser. Did you see the laser? Not now. I saw, I saw the laser there. Do you see the light still? I see the laser there. And somehow, over 18 kilometers over the damn lake, he got this perfect damn shot of the source. Not to mention, somehow, the white light was no longer visible in the damn footage. And the light was below the damn water surface. So ultimately, the results of this test were a damn lie. I hope you enjoyed this. Oh, and by the way, people like Jaronism and D. Marble have both shown their inability to read because it says in the very first line of the description below the video, you can mirror this at will, but not put ads on it. And look at what you guys did. Y'all have a nice. Oh my god!